A question on the forums uh, got me thinking about an old practice that I hadn't used in a while. And as coincidence would have it, I have a current project I'm working on that has led me to really the same challenge. Uh, the challenge that, that many of you discover at some point uh, is if you're working on a diagram like this one here that I'm developing uh, for one of my clients, uh, you start using the various smart shapes that are available to you and you quickly realize that you know that while the choices are pretty good they may not represent everything that you're looking for so i'm going to talk a little bit uh, today about how you can modify an existing smart shape and do things that will otherwise not be available through you through the regular shapes drop down icon so let's take a look at this. I need this shape here, but I don't need the arrow on each end. So what can I do? Well, the first thing I can do is I can uh, right click on the object itself and you'll see that I can convert it to a free form smart shape. Now this particular smart shape has different uh, selection handles for adjusting the arrow size, for example. Uh, you know, and I've just picked a, a spot for that and also the thickness of the arrow itself as well. So again, I've arbitrarily selected that, but I really can't modify much else. So I need to first of all convert it to freeform. And then what you'll see is you'll have selection handles that represent all the different corners of this particular object. Now, this is where things get a little challenging and you may wish to uh, zoom in to the maximum size to make these changes. Uh, so I want to eliminate this arrow here. So what I'm going to do, I can't delete these uh, these actual points. I can edit them though, as you can see here. And what I can do is I can move their position to perhaps a, a spot that is less obtrusive and do the same thing for this one here. Different shapes, of course, will have different results for you here. But again, I can move these now over here. Let's do the same thing to this arrow here. I'm just moving them so they're all in line with one another. Now you'll notice the edit points also have these green lines. Now depending on what you're trying to achieve, you may have to adjust those as well. So I'm just moving these so they're in line with uh, the two corner arrows there and we've now got that into position that's pretty good i'm pretty happy with that let's go back out to about 300 here and you can see clearly that this is really what i had in mind um, and of course i can now reposition this as i need it the one thing you might want to do is to save this smart shape and I'm going to give this uh, a name here. Um, we'll call it upper right corner. That sounds good. And so I'm going to rename this item. It now has a specific name there. And you'll see that it's available in my recently used shapes area here. So I could actually create another one of these uh, at a later time. Uh, just by going into the shapes area here and selecting that and draw a new one based on the, the things that I did earlier. So hopefully that helps you guys out. I know that it's a, a skill that's a, a little bit more uh, hands-on and manual, but uh, it should help you creating your various diagrams in Adobe Captivate. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at PaulWilsonLD, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.